I find it's contextual. Yes, I read the context because, is because contextually speaking, yeah. he's he's referring to prophets have come before. No, he's no, referring no, to himself. No, yeah, let's just do this together. No, no, Jesus Christ, the messenger whom you have sent. So Jesus actually refers to himself as a messenger in the Bible as well. This is the Islamic narrative of who he is. Islam teaches that Jesus is a prophet of God. Just like Muhammad, prophet of God, peace be upon him. Jesus, peace be upon him. Abraham, peace be upon him. Moses, peace be upon him. They were just messengers sent by God Almighty. But they were never God. Jesus is one who represents God. He's a representative of God and hence he's a prophet of God. And did you know that's what he says about himself in the Bible? Jesus does not go around in Galilee or Jerusalem or Bethlehem to saying he is God. He simply says he's a messenger who was sent by God so people can worship God alone. Does that make sense? Okay. What, what do you think? What do you think first of all of it's, that? Uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's a very just perspective. I mean, obviously, Pardon? Obviously, it varies a, a bit from what I believe. Okay. Uh, what I do you I mean? What do you exactly believe? What do you exactly do you believe? I mean, for me, um, it's, for me, I, 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 I believe. Pardon? I believe that Jesus is Messiah. Messiah. Yeah, we believe that as well. He is Messiah, and he is, he is one God. Because we, we believe in a three in one, God in three in one. Yes. God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Um, to to separate and to to separate from what? Um, separate him from from who God is for us. That that, that doesn't that doesn't constitute the Bible, but we believe. I understand. Um, but yeah, what I would ask you to consider is this is maybe a later understanding which developed in Christian history that Jesus is a part of the Trinity, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. But he doesn't go around saying that, you see. Rather, if you look at his express statements from the New Testament, like in Mark 12, 28, he says, um, when he's questioned by the scribe, what is the greatest of all commandments, O Rabbi? And he says, hear thou, O Israel, your Lord God, the Lord is one. One thing we observe, Christ is never referred to as Lord God, in the New Testament. So hence, when he says, your Lord God is one, he's referring to God as the only God who is the Lord God. He is one. He's not saying he's that God. Mark 10, 17. Do you know the story? Mark 10, 17 is the story of... A rich young man, he runs up to Jesus. He says to him, good teacher, what must I do to get eternal life? Christ says to him, why do you call me good? There is no one good except for only God alone. I'll say the word I know. For me, I, 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 I know that. Because we, we have it in John 1 1. You know, in the beginning was the word, yeah. Was the word, and the word was in God. So there is a lot of reference to, which but doesn't directly allude to within, our, within the Bible. Excellent point. I think, I think, I think every, every religious text has those things whereby things are alluded to but not said specifically. But if it's not um, specific, if, if 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 we're going to refer to like the concept of because because it would be rare for someone in most cases people are proclaimed they most people don't name themselves prophets they're proclaimed prophets and the same the, the same logic apply would, would apply with God that's why Jesus asked his his, his disciples what what do people say I am yes they said you are a prophet that's what they that's what exactly they said, right. And but don't said, you think what my... do you say I am? And he says, I think you are the Messiah. Yes, which is, which is synonymous title. Listen, let me explain to you something. This is very interesting because it's a, you're a Christian. I mean, I've got a little bit of knowledge. That's why I like to speak to Christians particularly. So according to the Dead Sea Scrolls found in the post-Second World War in Egypt, the term Son of God, Messiah, Prophet, they are interchangeable titles. They mean the same thing. Definitively speaking, a son of God is one who represents God. Whether that's a judge or an angel, a prophet, he's simply given that reference as one who represents God. So in the context of what you're saying, that when he's asked, when he asks one of his disciples, I think it's Peter, who do the people think that I am? And he says, some think you are Elijah, others think you are John the Baptist, but we know for you to be the Christ, the Messiah, which is what we as Muslims, we affirm that. Don't you think it's interesting? If you believe he's God, it would become incumbent upon him, appearing in the first time before an audience and him asking his disciples who the people think he is. And he, they simply say, we, you're the Christ. Don't you think he should have said, listen, you're right, I'm the Christ, but I'm also the incarnate God. He doesn't say that. This is very important. For example, if I was to 
introduce you to a company and you've got particular qualities, but I don't mention your major quality, which is the be all and end all, then you're going to think why afterwards, why hasn't he even mentioned that? So hence what we say is what he said of himself, that he's a prophet sent by God Almighty. Mark 6, 4, Matthew 21, 11, John 17, 3. He refers to himself as a prophet of God Almighty. He doesn't say, I'm God. He doesn't invite any worship upon himself. He refers to the Almighty God as someone separate from him. What do you think? If we that John 1, 1 passage you quoted. If, 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 if we are referring to what he refers to himself, because he refers to himself as son of man, and um, the, the whole concept of, of him being a son of God, him being um, that Messiah for us, is what he then reveals to his what he then reveals to his apostles after the, um, you mean the resurrection uh, after after Simon Peter refers to him as Messiah, he reveals unto him that I will die and I will come back. You know, no, but where does he say that? But the question we need to do, we need to address is after we've accepted, he refers to himself as the as a Messiah. Where is this concept that you're getting that he's God, a part of the Trinity? This is what I want to delve into, dive into. You mean the concept of God the Father, God the Yeah. Son, God where the does this come from? You know where it came from? This came in later councils. In the, you know, in the first 300 years. Of, I, think, I think it came in First Corinthians. Uh, it, it was referred mostly within. It's not. Um, within Acts and within the, the, the Paul's letters. It's not. Trust me, I've read them all. It's not. The only reference may have been in the past in 1 John 5 7, the first epistle of John. There are three there by witness in the heaven the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. But that's not to be found in the original Greek manuscripts. And did you know in majority of today's Bible, which one, which version do you read? KJV. KJV. I, I, read, I read KJV and I, 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 I vary because I do believe there is a lot of, you read another version and the words slightly change. So. Because the NIV claims to go back to the original New Te Greek manuscripts, the Codex Sinaitis and Codex Vaticanus. Whereas that, the, the, old, the, the KJV sticks to the 11th century edited document of the Codex Receptus. It's a much later manuscript. So what I'm trying to say to you, the one verse you could use as evidence of Christ being the Trinity was in 1 John 5, 7. Not the Gospel, the, the Epistle, the letter of John. And it says, but now it's been taken out of all the Bibles. You know, they've got a footnote in the NIV which says, this verse has been taken out because it's not to be found in the original manuscripts. All the other verses taken out, RSV, NIV, um, NASB, um, uh, and um, all of them take it out, bar the KJV. And they freely admit this is not to be found in the earlier Greek manuscripts. So again, I'm asking you, where is the evidence? You're saying alludes. But even when you look at those verses which may allude to his divinity, when you examine them in their context, whichever verse you want to bring out to make this allusion, he's not claiming what you may allude that he's, he's claiming. You've got to check any verse. Bring me just what we Muslims commonly say when we speak to our Christian friends. Is give us a verse which shows his, his evidence of him claiming to be God. So okay. when, when you humbly admitted that he doesn't expressly say so, however, he alludes to it. So when we say, okay, bring forward that verse which alludes to it. So when you read the context of whichever verse you are thinking, he's alluding to it, it, it doesn't say what you're uh, 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 illusory thinking. He doesn't say it as such. For example, the Father and I are one. You know about this in John 10, 30? The Father and I are one. Yeah, when you say the Father. If you read the context, it doesn't mean I'm one and same thing with um, God. But then what, about what, come, what becomes of John 3, 16? For God so ever loved the world that he gave his only son. That's what I, yeah. The Greek word, this is very interesting to note, you see. In your translation, you've got uh, that God so ever loved that he gave his only begotten son. But the term there in Greek is monogenes. Monogenes means simply a unique son. And we know Christ was, was born or conceived uniquely for so, the virgin birth. So, so, so in other words, yeah. basically, the, the the concept is yeah. um, when when referred to in, in a previous verse and it's alluded to, it's not direct. But when in that situation, it's it's a it's a contextual thing. Yeah. So when you read the context, it's a very interesting perspective. I mean, thank uh, you, I appreciate that. But when you read the context, even so, for example, me and you are standing outside Stratford. We're having a civil cordial discussion between a Christian and a Muslim. Now you could say we are one in the purpose of having a civil discussion. It doesn't mean we're one in essence, we're the same being, 
we have won in that we're having a polite discussion and we're, reaching, we're trying to reach a nice uh, conclusion to our discussion. So we've got the one purpose to reach that. That's how in the content, you've got to read from John, what goal tonight may be, read John chapter 10, verse 23, all the way up until 36, 37. And when you see when he makes the Father and I are one statement, he simply says that I am one with God in bringing you Jews back to worshiping God alone. That's what it is. In John 17, 21 to 23, he says to the disciples, you can become one with me and I can become one with you. So it's meaning one in the purpose of bringing you people back to worshiping God alone. Like I said, I, 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 I understand your perspective. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not hard-hearted in... No, no, in, you're in, very, in, you seem like a humble person. Way. I think um, some of these, some, when it comes to wait, what you believe, versus what you versus um things like context and stuff like that it's harder to it's harder to um ramshackle when you firm the belief for so long yeah. so for no, me, i understand you're an intelligent me. young man as well i can't for example say say to you oh it's uh 2 30 and it's 25 degrees heat it's it's, it's about seven o'clock and it's about one or two degrees so what i'm saying to you as intelligent you've got to go and examine what is the man saying i can't make conclusion if he's telling me something else so let jesus speak for himself so he tells us that he's expressly in the bible he tells us that he is a prophet sent by god um, which which verse now? mark chapter 6 verse 4 mark. matthew chapter 21 verse 11 john chapter 17 verse 3 it's in every one of the gospels <laughs> Mark chapter 6 verse 4. Mark chapter 6 verse 4. Okay. That a prophet is not without honour in his hometown. So he's referring to himself in the third person. Yeah. yeah. But couldn't, couldn't this also be classified as contextual? Yes, I read the context. Because, it's because contextually speaking, yeah. he's, he's referring to prophets that have come before. No, he's referring no, to himself. No, okay. yeah, let's just do this no, together. I'm, I'm, okay, what I'm we do it together? You let's can just, if you read up on the commentary about it as well. Yeah, let's do this together. You'd have to go let's to see, the study if, let's see if it's at all possible, but let's give him benefit yeah. of the doubt. Let's see if what you're saying is possible. Okay. Or is what I'm saying more possible and more plausible? Let's go through it. Check this out. Okay. Let's go very slowly. You're Christian? Very nice guy, very nice, very humble. Oh, I'm going to test that. Uh, let's give him a few moments. Okay. Okay, check this out. Let's read the context of Mark chapter 6. Okay. A prophet without honor, referring singularly. Mm. Jesus left there and went to his hometown, mm -hmm. accompanied by his disciples. Yes. Yeah. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard were amazed. Where did this man get these teachings? Just these things, sorry. They asked. What's this wisdom that has been given him? Given him. What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, J Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his home, except in his own town, amongst his relatives and in his own home. So this is entirely referring to him. The whole but, context. When, when, I, when I say contextual, yes. because, because even, even if we're being contextual here, a prophet, a pastor, yes. a preacher, yes. a bishop, yes. the, or, the whole idea of someone who has seen you grow up, that's why I say contextual, I mean in yep. reference to yeah. if, let's say, I become a preacher or a pastor or anything and I'm preaching and someone who grew up with me looks at me and sees, oh, like... There's yes. a difference between a prophet and a priest and a pastor. Oh, you're, you're, you're absolutely true. Yeah, let me just get to that. That's what I mean by contextual. He's ref he's, he has referred to, because it is, it, is, it is proven from uh, earlier times when prophets did come to be, they were disregarded within their own homes, yeah. within their own, because people saw them grow up. So they think to themselves, how did God change you? How, how changed are you really? And this is exactly what is happening here in reference to himself, you see, yeah. because they're yeah. questioning all but this about him. 
he's saying a prophet. He's not necessarily referring to himself. He's referring to the con the concept. The of, concept. I understand of, your point. But in this instant, mm -hmm. the the, the assemblies are given, being given to him. He's be, he's the source of this doubt. Where does he get this? How is he doing this? So it's, mm. it's in direct reference to him. To him. As opposed to a generic form that you're understanding. So hence, the con this is what I'm saying, context is king. Context is king. So on the surface, in a ubiquitous way, yes, your point can make sense. However, the, the context won't uh, allow you to because this is specific to him. Look, he's, they're making reference to his sisters, to his brothers. They're doubting him. And then he's saying that a prophet is without honor in his hometown, that you're doubting me, despite the fact that this is all there within the, within the context. Are you following what I'm saying to you? Let's read it once more slowly. Is it possible it's in reference to what you're saying, generically speaking, or is it specific to Christ? I would hasten to add, this is specific to a Christ due to these um, points that are being raised. I, 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 yeah. I'll say this, I don't deny in Good the situation man. that he's, he's referring to himself, but he's not referring to himself as a prophet. He's referring to himself in contextually that a prophet will be denied in his own home. Yeah, yeah, so that's what he's ref so if he's if he's ref ref yes. so but if he's referring to himself and hence he's a prophet making that reference to himself. Okay, uh, to, 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 to using that same context. Yes. Let's follow. Let, 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 let's use parables as a context. Sure. In a lot of the parables, he was also referring to himself. Yes. Yes. But within within that context, he wasn't a lot of the things that he was referring to. There once was like um, the parable of talent. Yes. And he go he goes and he gives talents unto three people. Yes. Yes. Why does what does parable mean? Parables we refer to a story with. A Normally, when parables. you talk about parables, parables, it's to confuse. It's not to make it clear. Just to give a like a figurative um, yes. understanding of something. That's why a lot of his disciples didn't understand because he spoke figuratively. It's called yes. figurative language. Yes. So anybody that wants to make a message clear is not going to speak in parables. That's absolutely true. Right. So absolutely that's... true. And furthermore, to see the fact that and, 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 and I will allude to the fact that he only. Yeah. You, you, you've got a nice, good manners. Good, excellent guy. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't get your names up real bad. Sorry, Hassan. <laughs> sorry, I just came in. Hassan. Yeah. Hassan. Hassan. Mas Mustafa. Mustafa. Delighted to meet you. So, like the whole, the whole added concept of he's speaking in parables. From, from what we know as Christians, is he was speaking in parables up to a point, which means he only started to speak clearly past a certain point, and that, okay. and that part within the context of the Bible okay. was after Simon Peter said, you are the Christ. Thank you. Thank you for clearing so, yeah. figuratively speaking, okay. even at this point, he was still speaking in parable. Okay. So referring to himself as a prophet doesn't necessarily mean I'm a prophet. He's referring to the concept that prophets okay. historically have not been acknowledged in their own home. And I, and I use the reference to be pastor and preacher to be that even, it, it, it's very true even in this day and age, if I become a preacher and I go home, my, my brothers, my sisters, as, as, as anointed as I might feel, may not get the message because they're thinking, I saw you grow up and you, you're not okay. like this, you see? So, that was, that's, that's so even if we are to, for a moment, take what you said, it would still refer to him as a prophet because even if it's generic, this is specific to him. The context is specific to him. So even if you are saying it's correct, it just harmonizes both points. That a prophet in generality that you're saying is without honor, but he's then alluding that he is that prophet because the text is telling us that. And you see what I mean? So all we got is read the context. context. He's referring to himself in that particular man. Look, so when they observe him and they're saying, where did this man get these things? So what they're doing, they're doubting him, yes? They're just like trying to make things a bit awkward rather than accepting as to what the miracles he's done. <laughs> then they say, what's he, this wisdom has been, that has been given to him? Remember, it's not his by default. Something has been given to him which only God can give. What so, are the... So, why we're on that topic, so by, by those stripes, who do you believe uh, is the father? So what we say, the father is a term which is used in a manner which shows someone who is closely associated to you as one who is your God. That, like for example, in John chapter 20, Jesus says to Mary, touch me, for, touch me not, for I have not gone on to my God, so my father and your, your father, my, my God, God and your, your God. God. So the term father there is a title adhering to God as being given that title of father. It comes from the Aramaic word Abba. Abba. Yeah, Abba. 
which literally, yeah, which we literally, use, we use that word abba, but yeah. not in the literal sense. Not in the literal sense. Of, you, of it, your it, thinking it, father. It's more so meaning cherisher, sustain. You know the Arabic word rub? Rub, rub. Rub abba. R -A -B -B. That means cherisher, sustainer, which is the same synonym given there to a abba as yeah, well. Because in the Christian belief, they translate it into English as Lord, but for us, we don't use the word Lord, we use the Lord as he says Rub, because in Arabic it means many things. In English, Lord can mean human beings. Right. Rub can only apply to the Almighty. So it's okay. very clear. So I, I, I mean, I, I, mean I, I understand that. I mean, the context of. But what of I feel Lord's you're doing. Within, within UK yeah. context, is very. What I feel you're doing, when he's reading the text, you're not reading the text as it is, you're reading your belief into the text. Projecting that belief. Yeah. I mean, Project but obviously so that's with due well, respect well, to you. Well, I mean, to, to, be, to be fair, the understanding is to always project belief. Honestly, yeah, fair enough. Fair that's, enough. Yeah, fair I, mean, enough. I, I can't imagine you reading the Quran and all. Like, there's, there has to be a belief you attach to. Yeah, but if something word. within the Quran then belief. sticks out, which goes contrary yeah. to our assumption, then we are to think, whoa, what are we thinking? Well, no, brother, brother, I mean, brother, yeah, no, let's, get, let's not get it conflated because belief is not blind faith. Belief for us True. is knowledge and it must be evidential. This is the difference. So we, we are encouraged to question things. And then if we don't have the knowledge of that, it's the seek the knowledge. It has to be... So Gabriel, let's just go back to what we were discussing. So him being a prophet. So that's Mark 6, 4. There's Matthew 21, 11. There's John 17, 3. We can go on and on, which makes it no doubt whatsoever as to who he is. Now, of more significance, is that when in there's another great verse which I'd like to really consider, and if you need to go, okay, but I don't want to be, you know, I don't. Yeah, want, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm you're a very polite right. guy, you are. But if you okay, do need to, yeah. please tell me. I, mean, I don't want to keep unnecessarily. No, you, I, I do need to go after I have another okay, program. Look, but yeah. it's a pleasure. Like, like, yeah. Just, uh, okay, for you. Very let me. Nice to talk to you. Very nice speaking to you as well, Gabriel. Delighted. Uh, I don't know. I'll take a number. I'll take a number. Can okay. you take his yeah. number? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you, you can. Take yeah, yeah, yeah. Take my number. Take my number. We'll do it off. We'll do it off camera. I'm going to make a little point on the camera. Okay. And I will. I don't want everyone knowing my number. Okay. So yeah, a fantastic, a very nice gentleman here called uh, Gabriel, Christian guy, thoroughly enjoyed speaking to him. So there are very decent Christians out there, you see, who you can have good conversations with, and we're hoping to have this exchange with them in a respectful, polite manner, like Allah says in the Quran. Let's, let's speak and let's um, converse with hikmah and understanding and with good um, intent. So this is what we should do as Muslims. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.